Glory to Jesus. Verse 1. Thank you, Jesus. Now we're looking at how the power of Jesus is strong and mighty. That what we're about to do for Jesus and what we're doing for him is not going to be by our own might or by our own strength. But we're looking at the at the power of Jesus working among us here. Hallelujah. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the servant of Jehovah, for the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, see back here, Back in these days, the nuns could get married and have children because Joshua was the son of nuns. Now, that's just a joke. <laughs> um, see, someone should show these nuns and say, hey, good news, you know. <laughs> you don't have to uh, refrain from getting married. Look, at Joshua was the son of a nun. <laughs> But the Lord spake unto him, uh, he was Moses' servant, you know, he, he, he helped Moses. God said, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore arise and go over this Jordan, thou and all this people unto the land which I do give them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given you. See how God speaks? He's, he calls those things that are not as though they were. He said, see, every place of the land that your soul shall tread on, I have given you. See, God always speaks in in faith. See, what we what we talked about like last month, we were, we were looking at faith. Faith is God's way of thinking. God's, God's going to say, I have done it already before it's even done. I have already given you. Every place that you see, God was happy here because he wasn't dealing with those former children of Israel that had already died off in the wilderness. God made them walk around for 40 years till every last one of the, the men of war that were alive and doubting that they could take the land. God made sure that they all died off. And now God was talking to a new generation. So God was excited now dealing with a new generation and he was telling Joshua, now look, I've given you every place that you see, as I said unto Moses. So here they were getting ready to go and now begin to take over these lands that the Lord God had, had uh, promised them. And now look at uh, Mark, look at Mark 16. <laughs> We're going to see something here. Here was the Lord speaking to Joshua. Now here is the Lord Jesus. And he's speaking to, to his people in verse 15. That's Mark. And, and uh, look at this in verse 15. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world. God was telling Joshua that you are to go and take over these natural cities and the land that is before you, you are to take it over for my name and for my glory. Now Jesus said unto them, go ye into all the world. See now, with Jesus' vision is the complete vision. What, what Jesus is manifesting was a complete vision. Vision. What God was saying to Joshua back in those days, he was using what they did as a type of what would happen in our day. So he was telling Moses and he told Joshua, you are to take over this land for the, for the kingdom of Israel. But now Jesus brought in a better kingdom and a much stronger a vision, he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now, 
Our mission is to go. See, Joshua had to go and overtake natural cities through, through battle, through war. God was telling him, I want you to destroy these cities, destroy everyone in it, and, and uh, take it over in many cases. But Jesus is saying, you are to go and preach the gospel. Now, Jesus said, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. <clears throat> but he that believeth not shall be damned. This is our mission now. See, Joshua had a mission. Children of Israel, when Moses, they were too afraid to fulfill that mission that God was giving them. They were doubtful. They were like, we're never going to be able to do it. Jesus is telling us now, go into all the world. Someone said, yeah, but you know, I don't like talking to people out there because, you know, what if they don't want to hear what I have to say? Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. What do you mean? But I'm, I'm too busy to spend some time telling people about Jesus. I work, I eat, or I sleep, or I have people, that, you know, my family to take care of. How can I talk to people? You see, and so don't don't be like those children of Israel under Moses, which they 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 weren't encouraged to go and take the land that God sent. Our mission is, he said, go into all the world. And preach the gospel. The gospel is the good news that Jesus Christ died for your sins. Died on the cross, took your sins upon his body, and was raised up in three days, and now he sits at the right hand of God, and you can be saved. You can go to heaven after you die. We just got to spread the good news of Jesus. There's many people that need to hear the good news of Jesus. Amen. Don't be doubtful in your mind. Oh, they already heard it before. Yeah, but there is there is watering, or there, there's planting, the Bible says, then there's watering, but God will get the increase. Amen. Amen. Your job is to preach the gospel. Your job is to tell someone about Jesus. Don't worry about the increase coming. It's your job to go and reach somebody for Jesus. Amen. You got neighbors, you know. When we were living in Chicago, it was much easier because there's neighbors, you know. Everybody couldn't help but to bump into one another. Hey, how you doing, you know? <laughs> Fighting over parking spaces and stuff. And, you know, where, where we live now, you know, we know our neighbors, but we had to, we had to go the extra mile just to greet them, you know. But I remember the day we moved in, I was so happy, and but it, it was a snow blizzard that day, and we drove that truck. But when I saw a neighbor across the street, I remember I ran over there. I'm like, "Hey, I'm your new neighbor." You know, what I mean? <laughs> he looked at me like he didn't say much. He's like, oh, "Okay." <laughs> and and that guy to this day, I can tell you know he's just a quiet guy. He just minds his own business. <laughs> I quickly learned, you know, living somewhere else, you know, people aren't as friendly, you know. <laughs> they want their own private space, but still we got to find a way to preach the gospel. There's no excuses here. Now, go back to Joshua. See, now we see our mission. God's not telling us I want you to go. With guns and tanks and stuff and take over cities. Aren't you glad that you're living in this day? <laughs> we get to spread the love of Jesus around. Amen. Amen. They were about to Joshua was a man of war. <laughs> God was telling them, you got to take this, take these places that I told you. Now, look at Joshua. Um, 
chapter. Let me see. One seven. Look at Joshua one and five, and God told them, "There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life." He said, as I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. He said, I will not fail you nor forsake you. So God was telling Joshua, don't worry. No man is going to be able to stand before you. Why? He said, because I'm going to be with you. As I was with Moses. Now God was with Moses. I mean, they were tight. Amen. They were friends. They were Amen. they were on face to face uh, status, and he said, "Now, as I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you." Hold your place there and take a look here at Matthew twenty eight. In verse eighteen, look what Jesus. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And look what he said, and lo, I am with you always. See, just like he told Joshua, he said, I'm going to be with you. So you don't have to worry, you don't have to fear. Now Jesus is telling us, and look, I am with you always. Amen. Even until the end of the world. And someone say amen. amen. So we got nothing to fear. Jesus said our mission is to Go now, because you see, what Jesus did, he did some amazing things by becoming a man, defeating Satan on every hand, tempted at all points, didn't give in to the devil not one bit. He was able to go and, and take the sin of the world upon him. He, he that knew no sin became sin for us. He let them nail him to that tree. When, when that movie, The Son of God, comes out on DVD or something, I think one Friday night we're just going to watch it up here. You know? And there's another Christian movie coming out. Now, the one there's one now out there now about Noah. But there's another one coming out on Easter about... There's one boy that went to heaven. Yeah, I yeah. see it. Yeah. You all gotta go see these movies. I'm telling you. We got we gotta see these movies. Amen. And that boy that went to heaven, that's a true story. I saw him, he, he was on the 700 Club just a, a few months ago. He's about 12, 12 years old now. And and now they're they're making a Hollywood movie. You know, they already made a, a, a Hollywood movie. Yeah. It's not God told me in, 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 in the first day this year that, that he was going to visit Hollywood, but I didn't know it was going to be this big. <laughs> Glory to God. God's movies are taking over, amen? amen? This is no joke. I mean, God took this boy. This boy died. Yeah. I, I, it's not the book we had. It is that book. Yeah. Colton. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. He died, and yeah, we, we, had, we had his book here for a while. Right. And um, now they made a nice Hollywood movie. We got to go see that movie. Yeah. But our mission now is to, to go because Jesus took on the sins. He went, he died on that cross, paid the price for the sins Amen. as a man. He came as the second Adam. The first Adam blew it, you know. Yeah. All types of authority that he was supposed to have. Now Satan was all involved. You know, Satan was able to to uh, infiltrate man in a way that God never never intended it to be so. So Jesus came as a man, defeated the devil, died on the cross, went into hell into the lower parts of the earth. 
He went, he, he that ascended, the Bible says, what is it but that he first descended into the lower parts of the earth? That's found in, in the book of Ephesians chapter 4. So he went into there, and then another passage says, he spoiled principalities and powers, throwing them off. So when Jesus went down there, he defeated the enemy right there in his territory. The grave cannot hold his body. He was the holy one down in the midst of hell. He ended up preaching the gospel then to even people that died in the days of Noah. The Bible says he preached to them. And, and, and though they were judged as men in the flesh, he ended up let, letting them out. Those that, that believed the gospel when Jesus preached to those dead people that were in there. Yes. Oh. He led them out into a great victory celebration. Uh -huh. Let them on high, the Bible says. Ooh. Glory to God. Uh -huh. Oh, he shook up hell yeah. in those days. Uh -huh. Released many captives. He yes. opened the prison doors. Oh, oh he literally yeah. came to open the prison doors. Uh -huh. Even those people that perished in the days Thank of Noah, you. Peter said. Thank See, this you. is all scripture I'm talking about. Thank you. Thank and Peter said, for this cause, it was the gospel preached yes. to those that were dead. Yes. And even those that were, that were in the days of Noah, he said. And so, Jesus then rose from the dead. Yes. Even many of the saints that died, when Jesus rose from the dead, the Bible says many of the saints came out of their graves and walked around Jerusalem. Amen. Amen. Oh, it was a mighty victory yes. that the Son of God worked yes. in that day. Yes. He conquered the enemy. Yes. Conquered death, conquered hell, and came out of the grave. Glory yes. to God himself after, after three days. Hallelujah. So now, Jesus was able to say, now all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Now, yes. I took it back. As a man, yes. as a son of man, I yes. took back authority. Yes, yes. See, this word power, look at what this word power means when he says all power oh, is given wow. unto me. This word power is not the same word when it says you shall receive power after, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. That word is miraculous power and miraculous ability. That's that word dunamis. But this word power, my computer will not freeze. <laughs> so, let me tell you what it means while, while it's rebooting. This word power means authority. Mm, yes. He's saying, now all authority oh. is given unto me. In other words, I won the right now hmm. as the son of man, yes. as the second Adam, yes. now to come into this earth yes. and take back all authority, not only in heaven, but in earth. Yes. That word power means jurisdiction. He was letting us know now all jurisdiction is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore now and tell everyone, teach all nations whatever I commanded you. Because Jesus is the king of heaven and earth. That word authority means all rights. I'll show you. All rights. Is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Amen. There we go. That word power means all privilege now is given unto me in heaven and on earth. See, Jesus had to win it back. All comp competency, freedom, in all the nations now, Jesus is saying there's freedom that I have to work in every nation. It means token of control. All delegated influence. The Father was able to delegate all authority into Jesus' hands. All authority, jurisdiction, liberty, 
power, right? So he was saying now, since I've been given this authority in heaven and on earth, now go ye therefore and teach all nations. Some of us are going to go into different nations teaching this gospel. I love to watch those shows. Uh, they got several on TBN where you, usually it's a, it's a couple of young people even going into far villages in different countries that nobody ever went to before. Amen. They don't know the language. Sometimes it takes them a week just to find someone who can translate from English to their language. Amen. But they're going, teaching all nations because of what Jesus did. Amen. Our mission is to reach lost people. Now, <laughs> We have to go into all the nations like Jesus said. But when Jesus told them, he said, I want you to go in, um, in the part in, in Luke, says Jesus was saying, beginning, beginning at Jerusalem, in uh, Acts, he said, you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Samaria, Amen. and all these reasons, and unto the uttermost parts of the world. Amen. Amen. So we can be an influence right here in our city. God wants to do some stuff right here, right now. Yes, He does. Yes, He does. And you got the authority from Jesus now to go and possess the land. Now, hopefully, we'll go a little further into this. Maybe we'll have to finish this Sunday. But He said, baptizing them in the name of the Father. And of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. See, Jesus wasn't, he wasn't trying to give a doctrine, so to speak, of baptisms. There is not supposed to be no confusion over this. Jesus wasn't even necessarily speaking that you have to dunk, dunk people in water. See, the children of Israel were baptized unto Moses, but they didn't have baptism services. Now, it's not wrong to baptize in water, but what he's saying, he because baptizing, see, the Bible says, as the children of Israel went through the Red Sea, when they were coming out of Egypt, and and in, uh, in, in 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians chapter 10 or 11, it says, when they came out of Egypt and passed through the Red Sea, they were baptized unto Moses as they passed through that sea. In other words, they were becoming loyal to Moses as their leader, who was, who was representing uh, the Lord Jehovah, because Jehovah would speak to Moses and tell him what to speak, and Moses was a great prophet. And then um, Moses said, or God began to prophesy and say, I'm going to raise up a prophet like unto Moses. And that was speaking about Jesus. And when you're baptized in the name of the Father, it's not something you have to have a baptism service and say certain words over them. Jesus was talking about, I want you to go and bring all nations in my family. Under the name of my Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. He wasn't talking about just some little practice of dunking people in water. He was, he was talking about baptizing, bringing people to submerge them in the kingdom of God. That's what he was basically saying. You know, so many people got small minds and they've made whole denominations surrounding around baptism doctrines. That's not what Jesus was, was, was getting into. But he said, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son. In other words, Jehovah, the Father, is he is now going to be known among all the nations as the Father in heaven. And the Son of God is going to be known among all nations. You need to let all nations know who the Father is, who the Son is, and who the Holy Ghost is. This is what Jesus was really um, talking about. 
And he said, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. We have authority to step foot into all nations. We have to, you know, of course, step foot here. We got to take the land here from the south side to the north side, from the east side to the west side in Chicago. But then God, God will open up more places and more land for us to uh, possess for him. He said, Lo, I am with you always. Now, go back to Joshua, but go to Joshua 10. <laughs> in verse 1. Now, we'll, we'll try to get in a little bit of it. <laughs> now, it came to pass. Now, you got to remember, God already told them to go forth. Now, let me tell you about when it, when it talks about Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem. Jerusalem was not in the possession of Israel at this time. He had heard how Joshua had taken A, I, and had utterly destroyed it, as he'd done to Jericho and her king, so he had done to I and her king. And how the inhabitants of Gideon had made peace with Israel and were among them. See, Gideon, the, the people of the city of Gideon, they were so afraid when they heard what Joshua did to uh, um, I and um, that other place, to uh, Jericho. They tricked Israel. Amen. Yes, they did. They got some people together and acted like they were coming from a far journey. They took stale food in their bags and they put on old shoes and stuff and, and a group of them came in. Yes. And then they're like, you know, we've come from a far country and um, we're just wondering, you know, can can you give us something, you know, to help us out or whatever. And they came in and they were making peace. And then the princes of Israel made a made an agreement. Okay, we will, you know, we we swear by the Lord that we will not harm you, but you know, we will treat you right and stuff. And so, then after a few days went on, people were like, "No, you guys are right there. You're from Gibeon." <laughs> they recognized them, and then they ended up telling them the truth. But but because they they swore to the Lord, the princes of Israel swore to the Lord. That they would not touch them, so they let the people of Gibeon in, and they actually made peace with this city. So now Gibeon, in our um, uh, reality right now, symbolizes people that are making peace with God and with the kingdom of God. People that are getting saved and born again because of the love of Jesus. Could I have, wait? Could I have a question for you on the phone? Sure. Why? I mean, after they had already been told not to do anything without inquiring of God. So why Israel didn't inquire of God about these people? That's a good question. But the Bible makes note and says that for they had not asked the Lord about these people that came in. So because they didn't, they didn't go to the Lord and ask them what should they do, God didn't speak to them. They just let them come in and then that's how it happened. It actually says, for they did not inquire of the Lord concerning them. But, but nevertheless, God honored the peace that, that they made with Gibeon. Because it says now, when, when king, um, this king over here, Adonai Zedek, he, he was king of Jerusalem. He heard about that. They feared greatly. Now Gibeon had made peace with Israel. So it says they feared greatly because Gibeon was a great city as one of the royal cities. And because it was greater than I and all the men there ever were mighty. So now Israel had made peace with, with Gibeon and Gibeon themselves was a great city among them. Wherefore Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, sent Unto Horem, king of Hebron, and unto Piram, king of Jarmuth, and unto Japhia, king of Lachish, and unto Deber, king of Elgin, saying, Now he sent to 
four other kings, saying, Come up unto me and help me, that we may smite Gideon. Amen. Amen. For it has made peace with Joshua Amen. and with the children of Israel. Now, this is what the devil will do. See, because back here, now remember, they were fighting a natural battle. Yeah. But this is what, what demonic princes and kings that are set up will begin to do against people that are getting born again, people that are that are coming, for example, they get saved and they start coming to our church, for example, or, or going to any church of Jesus. Satan is going to start making strategies against them. Oh, man. This is what the Lord showed me. I didn't know we were going to get into this last week, but that's why the Lord let me know this is what I was showing you, a vision of an invasion mm. of uh, demonic powers. This is the invasion he was showing me, but or this symbolizes the invasion because look what happened. They said that, that we might smite Gibeon for it has made peace with Joshua. Mm -hmm. So right now, what are we facing in this day? When people start getting born again and coming into the house of God, there are different kings and principalities Amen. that begin to, to gather. Now, this is talking about something that, that happens spiritually. Amen. Remember what we said last week with those invisible creatures that we can't see called demons. These are demonic powers, but remember, Jesus said, in my name, you shall cast out demons. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And remember now, Jesus said, all authority is given unto me in heaven and on earth. He said, these signs will follow them that believe. In my name, you shall cast out demons. He said, the gates of hell will not prevail against my church. So, here, we see how they wanted to attack Gideon because they made peace with Israel. When you get saved, when you get born again, you need to know that there are going to be strategies from, from the kingdom of darkness against you. They're going, to, they're going to try to come. They're going to try to discourage you for you joining up with Jesus now. Now, they, they made peace with Joshua. Now, Joshua, when it comes to the Greek language, see, the Old Testament was written in Hebrew, but when you when you read that word Joshua, it's the same word for Jesus. Amen, that's right. Because even in the New Testament, there's a, Andrew was just telling me, he was so confused about this one scripture that said, for if, jo for if Jesus had given them peace, they wouldn't have stopped for, for a, you know, for another they to have peace, but it was really talking about Joshua. If Joshua had given peace, the book of Joshua. so Joshua, Joshua is just you know he was a servant of Moses, but now Joshua was you know was the one. But look how it says: for they came, they wanted to smite Gibeon. For Gibeon made peace with Joshua and with the children of Israel. So now when people begin to make peace with Jesus now, there are spiritual attacks that we're facing. Now this is something as we read later, we might get into it more Sunday if we don't finish the day. If we can't finish by 10 o'clock, maybe we'll have to finish the rest of Sunday. <laughs> But, but what, what we're going to see now, he went on to the other kings and said, look, you got to help me. we we got to attack Gibeon. In other words, the devil's saying, now, what are we going to do? Those young men, those young women that used to go to Bobo's Club every Friday night, got to go over to that church on 71st Street. You see what I'm saying? Those demons begin to begin to get scared because whenever there's a threat against his kingdom, now they're going to set out to smite Gibeon. Now, what are the, the attacks today? Some of the strongholds in this day, 
See, we're about to see some gang, gang members get saved. We're about to see people. Now, we've already seen there's some among us, me, one of them, who, who've been set free from that stronghold of alcohol and drugs. Yes, yes. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. Amen. See, and, and these, um, there are demons that are perpetrating their influence upon people. Mm -hmm. See, there are there are demonic strongholds of drug addiction mm -hmm. and alcoholism. Mm -hmm. The problem with the gangs, there are demons behind that that is deceiving their minds. Mm -hmm. So when 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 gang bangers begin to get saved, the devil Amen. don't like it. Amen. Mm -hmm. When my son Andrew left the gang, after a while. They said, we're going to kill him. <laughs> devil, devil sent word to try to kill him. That's how they ended up moving him. But when people get saved from alcohol or drugs, now there are strongholds that, that people are set free from. Some people are bound by sexual addictions and problems. Some people... They're bound with that demon, you know, and and then you know you got some just bound by re regular sexual addiction, but then you got some bound by the uh, homosexual stuff. Now, Amen. these are forces of demonic powers that we as the church cannot be afraid of in this day. Now, those four. Well, five kings all together begin to come against Gideon, but Joshua and the people of Israel ended up fighting against them. Amen. But what we're facing now, we're going to, the church is facing like an invasion and an attack. You see, we as the people of God, for example, we love uh, people that are gay, lesbian. Now they got that thing, it's like the L-G-B-A-T or something, and it's, it, it's describing gay men, it's describing bisexuals, it's describing women, lesbian, and it's describing transsexuals and transvestites. So I said, what are those? <laughs> those are people that started off being a man, for example. And as they, as those spirits get in them, they think that they're a woman, and they end up doing stuff to make themselves physically and, and mentally and all, all that stuff, you know, like a woman. So now you've got, um, even those demons are getting men. So... They're, they even start working on the governments. Amen. They even Amen. start trying to get in the government to try to work through the government to come against the church. Amen. Amen. Now we love all those people. Amen. But they're trying to impose against us. All we're telling all people is that Jesus died for your sins. Mm -hmm. No matter what sin you have. Mm -hmm. I like the way when they when they asked President George Bush about it when he was president. They're like, uh, Mr. President, do you think uh, uh, that homosexuality is a sin? You know, for some that don't know, you know, President George Bush, he was he, he was a real Christian guy, you know. He was always in prayer and had a whole group of prayer warriors praying for him. And he said, far be it for me to judge one sin above the other. God <laughs> gave him wisdom right there on the spot. Amen. Amen. They didn't know what to say after that. He said, far be it for me to judge one sin above the other. So, um, we're just trying to reach people for Jesus. But see, but by people getting saved now, now this is an attack that is deliberately, there are demonic strongholds behind the gay and lesbian and transvestite, transsexual, bisexual movement. 
And trust me, those demons that have deceived those people, those demons are probably laughing behind their back that, that they were able to trick them to become what they are. The demons probably already even gave themselves. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <It's just up. laughs> You know, the demons, they don't, the demons probably despise it themselves, you know. <laughs> you know? But they're, they're sent out to, to deceive them. And sometimes they go working on the biggest, tallest guy and try to make him think he's a woman. And stuff. I told you about, all about that nurse one time. I had to go to the doctor. And they had this small little room to be seen in. I mean, it was a small room. And lo and behold, the nurse wearing a skirt and everything was a guy bigger than me. <laughs> <laughs> had a deep voice. His, his, his transformation didn't get too far. Oh, I, I, it, it just looked like a, a big man in a, in a skirt. You know? <laughs> and he's checking my blood pressure. I'm saying, oh, God, what is this? <laughs> My Jesus, help me. <laughs> okay, give me your left arm. You know, this guy's... <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm thinking? Man, the devil got these people to see. Now, this is about 25 years ago when, when this happened, so it wasn't even that common, you know. Right. But this guy was out there bold, you know. But well, sometimes the devil tricks the big, big guys, you know, and make them think that they should be gay. And those demons probably be, be laughing behind their backs, giving each other high fives and stuff. Look, look at the fools we made out of these people. Men with men, burning in their lust, and women with women. Don't ever accept in your mind that that's normal. And you got to watch that spirit. When you have kids, Amen. Amen. you got to deliberately Jesus. speak some things and pray over them and watch their mannerisms. Mm -hmm. You know, if you got young boys and you see them start acting, you know, trying to act like a woman or something, you know, you got to find a way to, to address that, you know, or show them... You, you know, sometimes you don't even have to do it directly, but just in you talking about it, that can inspire some of them. Oh, you, you know, because those, those demons start working on them when they're young. Amen. That's why when some of them get old, they think they were born that way. <clears throat> but they don't realize they let that spirit in when they're about seven, eight, nine years old. The de demons come into them and by the influences, and of course, we know many of them turn gay because they were molested by older men and different things like that. So, those attacks are coming. Now, they're trying to work through the government 